What is going on guys, Horizon here, and on today's episode of RLCS Game Plan, we're going to be taking a look at just what went wrong for Furia in their semi-final match against Team BDS. Now for this, we are going to be taking a look from the perspective of the most well-known and probably best player on Furia in Yan, so let's go ahead and kick things right on off with some camera spam, everyone's favorite, and off we go. So one thing about South American players is that they are incredibly fast and they are just going to be throwing this ball all over the field. And another thing we'll see is that Furia always goes for passing plays with their teammates. Almost all the time they're going to be in a position to pass with their teammates and it's actually going to be something that they utilize. So for example, right here coming up we'll see Yen go up and he sees Kaio downfield and drops the ball right off to him. And this allows them to launch on a counter-attack here, and they eventually end up scoring from it. So that very proactive positioning to be in front of your teammates to enable them to have passing options is one thing that's going to make Furia so, so dangerous. Good boost grab there from Yen as well, just to make sure BDS can't have it. And on we go. It's a good boom here from Yen. A lot of times you'll see like situations like this and people will preach, oh, you got space, make sure you utilize it. But if we look at BDS's positioning right here, they're all kind of retreating and Monkey Moon is stuck flat-footed in net. So if we just boom this ball up high, it makes life really awkward for Monkey Moon who now has to go up and try to get a touch on this. And he actually misses it. So this almost turns into a really nice shot opportunity for Yen. Actually, it does turn into a nice shot opportunity. Almost turns into a goal, but unfortunately he just can't squeeze it under the crossbar but that all comes from that boom away from their defensive half and recognizing what position the opposing defense is in and where you might be able to catch them out with a big clear rather than a possession play so yen has a bit of a misread here but what i'd like to see is if we look at the net as this ball comes up the wall is it's kind of vulnerable because seiko is off going to get boost he's he's out of the play monkey moon is very very near post and extras in the corner so if yan just drives up this wall and connects with this ball as it bounces there is a very real opportunity that he could score this from here or at least put a threatening touch on target or in the surrounding area where it would be an awkward ball for BDS to deal with. So that's what I'd like to see here instead of trying to go up for a controlled touch because control in the corner when you have two BDS members bearing down on you isn't really going to do a whole lot whereas a hard touch in the direction of the net would be very beneficial in this moment. Stay behind the ball very nice. Oh boy. Yeah. So, this entire goal goes back to this air dribble. And the reason being is Yan takes control of the ball, which is just perfectly fine. This is what we love to see. But the problem is that at the end of this, he gets one more touch on it, but then Monkey Moon gets this for free. So instead of it being a 50-50, where the ball stays in the midfield or pinches into BDS's half. It's very forcibly won by Monkey Moon back into the Furia half. And where this is a problem is it allows BDS to have a much more threatening attack started much faster. And we'll notice that immediately because of the speed of BDS, the next touch card is slow to it, gets beat out by Seiko. Then Kaio goes up for this and gets faked out by Monkey Moon. And as soon as Kaio gets faked out, there's just nothing that's gonna go on from here. Monkey Moon gets a bump on Yen just to be sure, but Yen didn't have any boost anyway. And it's just an easy slot away for extra. So that all kind of comes down to just Yen being able to make sure there's a solid 50-50 at the end of his air dribble. If there's a 50-50 there, it just slows down BDS's attack entirely, and possibly allows Fury to get better set on defense. By just kind of giving the ball up and enabling BDS to come forward full force, it's a lot da more dangerous a lot more deadly and as we see there a couple misplays a couple missteps in that ensuing defensive sequence and you give up the goal oh well time one one we got plenty of time more yan spam we love to see it love the idea of the fake kickoff here just to mix things up 
I love to see it. So, here's a moment where I would like to see Yen take space. Because Monkey Moon's waiting in the midfield for this ball to get boomed out. He's just sitting there waiting, so banging this long isn't really going to do anything because BDS is pretty much prepared for whatever. They're not in a scramble retreat at this point. But if Yen takes this into a controlled air dribble, he now has two players backwards to him. So he at least would be able to take this into a controlled 50 instead of just booming this up and giving a chance for extra or monkey moon to jump up for this which as we can see before as he turns off ball cam here because he hits this he turns off ball cam and before he even turns ball cam back on extra's already in the air so there's no chance now that yan has hit this ball towards extra and extra's already jumped that yan is going to get back to this ball he still goes for it anyway but yeah gets beat does get a touch on it at least but Still stuck in Furious half. If he takes control there, it's very possible that he's able to get it over extra, which is kind of what we want to go for. Awkward roll on the wall. Defense is going to organize itself, so no concerns there. I like this creative positioning, trying to make it really hard to, for BDS to read what we're going for. Doesn't work out in that situation, but never know what might come of it. Really nice patience there as well, recognizing... That there's no danger, he doesn't hear anybody coming, his teammates are probably telling him that no one's coming, so he knows he can take his time with this. Nice little touch over into the corner. Tries to follow it up, but can't do much with it. Unfortunate touch here. I'm willing to bet that this is not necessarily the touch he wanted. Ideally, he's probably wanting to put this into a corner, or somewhere that's safe and can't immediately be followed up on since he is the last back. But unfortunately, he just gets a bit of a lofty touch forward. And extra is able to take back over control. Ideally, Yen probably wants to send that to the corner and just didn't get the right touch on it. I love this play though. This play is so smart. So this ball goes into the air. Card cuts it out. So now at this point, everyone from BDS is watching Yen go up this wall. And it's basically going, okay, he's either going to control this, air dribble, bang it long. You know, they're really trying to break down... The speed Yen's going at, the angle he's coming from, and what touch he might get on the ball. And Yen's sitting here thinking, I'm just not going to touch it. I'm just not going to do anything is what I'm going to do. He literally just parks it on this wall, acts like he's going to go for it, pulls off. And what this does is it forces BDS back because they they keep waiting for a touch to come in. And it never does. And they all just kind of leave, and this gives a free ball to card. And allows for a perfect bang down field. And this really should be a goal. It is so unfortunate that Monkey Moon gets back to that. If this is just any further to the right, this is a goal. But obviously when you're banging a shot from this far away, you're not really... Like, placement isn't really what you're going for here. You're going for power and speed. And unfortunately, Card just ever so slightly puts it too far to the left. And allows Monkey Moon to come back for it. Really, Furia should be up 2-1 here. Really unfortunate that that doesn't work out. See if Fury can maintain pressure. Not quite. Smart not using boost, though. Just getting back downfield, recognizing that there's no imminent threat, so we don't need to rush back downfield. We love to see that. This is, again, great positioning. Just letting his team do what they're going to do. Again, should probably be another goal. If we look at the positioning, if Kyle can put this into the top right, that's a goal based on Monkey Moon's positioning. Unfortunately, was not to be. Not the biggest fan of this challenge. There's no shot that you're getting this around Monkey Moon. Like, there's no angle you can hit that's going to get this around him. So instead of diving in for this, I would have loved to see Yan really throw a curveball to BDS and look like he's going to rush in and then fake off of it. And by doing that, Monkey Moon's still going to jump like he does now. But now instead of Yan nose diving into the wall, he'd be on his wheels like facing the corner or maybe slightly more uh, back in between midfield and the corner. And that would enable him to follow up on whatever touch Monkey Moon does get when Monkey Moon thinks there's a challenge coming in. But by diving in like this, he does, number one, adds momentum to the ball because it's more of a pinch with Monkey Moon than anything else. And it gives Monkey Moon a free lane down the side of the field at this point. 
So instead of diving in like this, if we instead came in for the challenge and pulled off and went this way, Monkey Moon's still gonna hit the ball this way. And then we can take it over or we can follow it up the wall wherever it goes. Um, but Monkey Moon's still gonna give us the ball because there's no way we get this close and Monkey Moon doesn't do something. Really nice catch here from Yen. I really like this patience, just recognizing that he has time and space and is able to fit that ball around extra. It doesn't lead to anything, but it's just smart recognition of when you have time. Again, clear going out in the direction of Kayo, trying to allow their teammates to thrive. And again, we see continuous passing plays from Furia. And one of the things I want to commend them on, and this is something I harped on NRG a lot about, is when you have two players who are both in similar positions, communicating who's going to go for this ball is so important. And there's never a moment when I'm looking at this that I'm like, oh no, they're both going to go. It's communicated early and it's communicated clearly that Karn's got this ball and Yan just lets him go. And of course, it's a really nice pass over to Kayo. Unfortunately, extra's there to cut it out. But it's just being able to keep that communication solid and knowing how you want to play the game and being on the same page as your teammates makes life a whole heck of a lot easier. This is going to be awkward. Retreating defense. Kayo beat one. And clear out to the side. Kayo misses again. And that's pain. So, this all goes back to a very similar point I made about the first goal. Yen goes up for this air dribble. He doesn't get the best first touch. But instead of using his boost to like try to get in front of this ball, he just stops. And it gives a free clear to BDS. Now the unfortunate thing is BDS sent two players. So if Yen is able to get some kind of block on this, now all of a sudden all three BDS players are around the midfield line. Because Monkey Moon committed for this first play. So Monkey Moon's landing around midfield. And then if we get, get a block on this, these guys are both landing around midfield. And now, at the very worst, we're in a 3v1. But instead, they get a banger clear. Karn tries to do damage control and gets around one, but then gets the ball sent past him. Kayo now goes up to try to get a block on extra. The problem is extra misses. So the ball that Kyle was playing never actually came through. Those are always the, the painful ones when you're going for a block and then the person you're trying to block attempts to make contact and doesn't. It's not even like it was a planned fake. It was that they accidentally whiffed and it's gonna work. So that happens. Now I'm right here. We already know that our two teammates are gonna be a little slow in recovering. Because Card landed in midfield. So he's going to take a bit of time. He is at midfield right now. So he is not back behind us yet. So ideally, in this situation, we want to try to keep the ball as close to ourselves as we can. Because we do not want to just give this ball back to BDS. And now have all three of us trying to recover. Because if Yan just bangs this ball away, that leaves all three players now having gone for a challenge and all three now need to recover. So we wanna try to just roll this up the corner and follow it up, control of 50. Or if we're gonna boom it, it needs to be downfield over everybody. We can't just hit it into the sidewall like this. This is about the worst thing we could do. Cause literally it's to the area where all three BDS members are. So not really where we wanna go with the ball. It either needs to go up the corner wall so we can follow it, or all the way downfield. Not in between. And of course, BDS take back over. Kayo, still trying to recover, is now in an awkward spot and has to immediately jump for this, and unfortunately he misses. Because he misses, Card now needs to go, but Card's a little slow because he might have been expecting Kayo to hit the ball. So he gets dunked by Monkey Moon pretty hard. And now the question is why right now does Yen not jump for this? And the thought and based on what it looks like, is that he's expecting this ball to hit the crossbar and bounce down. Which is technically what it does. The problem 
is even if that happens, look at where Monkey Moon's landing. Monkey Moon is going to have an opportunity to put this ball in the net if you don't touch it. And like, it doesn't even look like he read this correctly at all. Because it, it looks like he's expecting it to bounce like out slightly too with the way he turns to the right at the end of this. And he turns slightly to the right, so maybe he thinks it's going to hit the corner and bounce at an angle back towards him. But I think in, in this situation, your last man back, you have a ball floating at your net. I don't care how sure you are that that ball is hitting the crossbar. You need to delay time for your teammates because they're both floating. And how do we delay time in this situation? We got plenty of boost. Let's play this ball to the corner. Let's get it downfield. Because if we play this ball in the corner, we're going to beat Monkey Moon back to it. And then we just need to outplay extra and we'd be back on offense. Even if this ball bounces exactly like he's hoping to, he still has to then catch the ball and then either go for an air dribble or something to get the ball downfield. Whereas he has a free clear to the corner that he just doesn't take. So really awkward sequence there all the way around. And that's probably the weakest point they're going to have in this whole game. Because I will say, another thing that I really like about what Fury is doing is they have used three different kickoffs. They went for a standard kickoff in the beginning, then they faked the second one, and now on this third one, they played it to the back corner for a possession play. So I love that they're mixing up their kickoffs, because it really makes it difficult for BDS to know how they want to approach the kickoff since they don't know what approach Fury is going to go for. Unfortunately, Yen gets Goomba stomped. Love the idea though. Right here, I would have liked to see a pass get snapped across from Card. If Card snaps this ball right over to Kaio right now, all three BDS players are on the same side of the field, so Kaio is going to have an opportunity to go for something here. Possibly get a couple outplays maybe break down the BDS defense a little bit so that his two teammates can follow up. Um, but it ends up just being a 50 with, with Seiko. And this balance is kind of awkward for Kaio to read. And he gets beat out by extra. If this ball is snapped across immediately, right here, and it's hit across Kaio, this is a free clear. And Furious on offense. Like, this is the one time that the passing option isn't taken. Really big missed opportunity here to get the ball down the field a little bit faster. I like the patience from Yen, but he also needs to recognize that Extra is just sitting on that back wall, on that side wall. So banging this ball up the wall, like just straight towards Extra, isn't going to get him anywhere. I would almost like to see him just wait for this ball to hit the corner and then jump off and take it into an air dribble just to help maintain possession. Like I know 24 seconds left, we're kind of starting to be in a panic because we want to get the ball into offense, but we can't just disregard what the smartest play is even though the fastest way to get this ball into bds's half is just to hit it as hard as possible and hope no one cuts it off in the midfield the most effective way to get the ball into bds's half is going to be to try to outplay their first man and then 50 their second because that will start to break down their defense and enable you to gain some control in their half banging it away like this is just playing into what they want you to do at this point Good positioning again, love the pass, good attempt by Yen, just can't quite get around. Furia starting to exert some pressure. We'd like to see a pre-jump here, like, we're 10 seconds left, you know Card's gonna get this touch, and you kinda have to play for it at this point. And if, for whatever reason, you jump and Seiko beats you, and Seiko wins this challenge with Card, then Kaio's back to take over. But if you jump super early for this, you have a chance. So because this ball is going to be moving towards Monkey Moon, the only way Yan is going to beat him there is by jumping before him. And the only way to really jump before Monkey Moon in this instance is to pre-jump the touch from card. Because otherwise, Monkey Moon has the major advantage of the ball coming towards him. Now I love what card tries to do here, because card recognizes that Monkey Moon is up for this and he's probably going to get a touch. So he goes for the bump. He just misses it. If he bumps Monkey Moon off there, 
Yan's doubling this, and we might have a tie game. But unfortunately, Card just misses the bump. And Monkey Moon's gonna get this touch. But oh, was it ever close to being a spectacular play from Card. At this point, that was kind of the last throw of the dice. They're trying to keep it up, but... That's just about it. So, at the end of the day, this was a really solid game from Furia. They really just came down to giving up goals over simple mistakes. Allowing your opponent to get a free touch at the end of your own air dribble. Just missing some touches. As odd as it sounds, the solution for Furia in this game was hit the ball, forehead. That was literally it. If they hit the ball more effectively, they would have been fine. But they just had a couple missteps, a couple misplays, and that just shows how perfect you need to play to take down this BDS team. Because any inconsistency and any imperfection, they are right there to take advantage of it. So if you want to take down Team BDS, you need to play perfect. And unfortunately, Porphyria in this series, they just couldn't do it. I think the way they lost this game kind of got to them, because in game 6, they just totally fell flat and got dominated by BDS. But what a season for Fury. At the end of the day, Sam making top 4 at the World Championships, that's something that a lot of people would have said wasn't possible at the start of the season. So, hats off to Furia, and I am sure we will see them come back with a vengeance in RLCS 22-23.